Very good. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Evening, real people. Evening, virtual people. We are um, in. Uh, we are about to start the new chapter, chapter nine, page three hundred and seven. We're going to talk about uh, Tavila. We're basically uh, oh, we're still in volume seven. Yes. Yeah. What We've page? got three chapters left, and then we will uh, be jumping twelve. You'd like to go to fifteen. <laughs> we haven't done twelve yet. Sorry, I know. Well, have we got fourteen yet? We'll discuss yeah. after if they got lost somewhere. Okay, so we're on page three hundred and seven. So we've got to look at Tvila. We'll try. I'm not going to get through all of it today. We'll try and get through as much as we can. And then Doctor Ween has not yet joined. There's a there's about Veset about cycles. And the final chapter talks about all sorts of medical procedures. And uh, Peter's threatened to bring in all sorts of equipment. So um, <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. Okay, and then we'll go back to Arachayim, back to uh, volume twelve. I believe is on the agenda. Okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, we're going to talk about Tvila. So the first we're going to talk about immersion on time, Tvila Bismana. There's a machlok about whether uh, there's a requirement just because a woman is able to go the, on the day 12 or after Shiva Nikim to go to the mikvah. It, is there a mitzvah to go at the earliest opportunity uh, or, or can she opt to wait? Let's say her husband's out of town. Does she have to go to the mikvah uh, or not? So on page 307 in source one, the Gemara uh, Sechah Shabbat firstly teaches us something which we've seen previously. What does it mean somebody who's sick in her state of nida? Meaning even once she's counted Shiva Nakiyim, if she never goes to the mikvah, she will never be to horror. So it, that status of nida is, goes on forever. As is Paskin in the Shulchan Arach in source 2. Now, until they perform tvila, they, they have that status forever. Right? I told the, the, the flip side of it is obviously that even women who are not from if, if you know post menopause are encouraged just to go to mik for once, then they're set basically for the rest of their life. So that's the the, the optimistic so the other side of the coin. Something to think about. Okay, uh, the Ushalmi though in source three over the page brings this idea uh, the question about whether there's a tevila bismana mitzvah or not. In source three, the Ushalmi says, and surely we learn in the Mishnah, min haderech, a husband who comes home from his way, nishehem lehem becheskat tahara. The assumption is that their wives are Becheska Tahara, that they're Tahara, that they've been to the mikveh. So what does this assume? Amar Rechanina, says Rabbi Chanina, Zotamera, this means, what does this imply? That a woman is not supposed to wait in a state of Tumah. So the husband knows that, that in theory, she should have been to the mikveh already. That is the case. And therefore, according to Rabbi Chanina, However, Rabbi Yosef Karo in the Bet Yosef in source four, points out that we don't actually necessarily pass in that way. That certainly when the husband is out of town, we do not say Tvila Bismana Mitzvah. And that if the husband's away, that she's not got a requirement to toggle after the Shivan Akim immediately if she thinks he's not going to be back. As we see in source four, says the Reverend Yosef Kara, Va'aniyomer, I say, Delab hachi sugyan de alma. This isn't how we pass in general, the alma in general. Ella rather, what do we say? Commander Amat Tvila Bismana ain't a mitzvah. We follow the opinion that Tvila on the right night is not doesn't it's not a it's not a mitzvah. You have to tell all the first opportunity. Shahare en lacha isha tovelek because she ain't ba'ala ba'ir. Women, if their husbands are away from on business for you know out of town, they don't have to do Tvila. When we come, I come nearer, but nonetheless, he does concede that it seems she ain't ba'ala ba'ir. If he is in town, mitzvah lit bal bismana. Then obviously, if he is at home and he is in town, then there's a mitzvah to tovel on time. Shahare matzino. And he brings out the story from Yahshua bin Nun, Chazal saying the Gemara and Erevin, but Yahshua, Shene'enash al Shabitel et Yisrael me Piraviriva le Laila Acha, that he delayed the siege, uh, the story of Yericha, and the Gemara there says that therefore uh, he, was, he was sort of told off for that, he was punished for that. Uh, that if in theory they have the opportunity to be intimate, they should not um, delay the tefillah for, for any reason. And, uh, and uh, okay, and that, that's how the Shulchan Arach, he himself passes that way in his Shulchan Arach in source five, that if the husband's in town, then there is mitzvah of tefillah bismana in source five. In ba'ala ba'ir, if the husband is in, is around in the town, mitzvah lit bal bismana. Then there's a mitzvah to tov on time. Shaloli batel mepira v'yiva afilu la'ala achat. So interesting about whether that would apply if they've already have children, they've already fulfilled the mitzvah of puru ravu, because the implication of shulchan aruch is it's about the chumrat ha mitzvah of puru ravu. But um, but the, uh, the the more contemporary poskim say that's not. That's not the case. That even people who've had children, or, or, or even a woman is pregnant, or, or 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 too old to have children, nonetheless, 
that, that halacha applies. So Mordechai Liao in Sul 6, in his Darkei Tahara, says this explicitly. He says, gam ken bizmana. There's a mitzvah even for her to tovel on time. Even if it's not because she's going to have more children, such as if she's pregnant or elderly, or if she's unable to conceive for other reasons. Why? Meaning it's not just about procreation, but also the mitzvah of ona, of intimacy uh, between husband and wife that should not be delayed if the husband is in town. Okay. So, um, so they quote here of Vajya that says, what happens if, if the husband is away? So when the husband is away, they quote here in the Tara to buy it, Rav Vajya, who says that there may be, there's not a requirement for her uh, to tovel in such a case if she prefers not to. Um, and based on Kabbalah, which is not my, my area of expertise, he says some people even say that she shouldn't tovel, right? Because of Kabbalistic dangers. Not, again, not my cup of tea. But in Sul 7 says, Rav Vajya in Tara to buy it, if he's not around, he's on a business trip for another two weeks, then she doesn't have to do the speak. But Yeisha, remember those that say, but she should not tovel if her husband's not there based on some Kabbalistic uh, sakana. However, even, others... even the possibility that she's, that there are kids at home, that she's alone in the streets, whatever the case may be, there could be good justification for a woman not feeling su sufficiently secure. Right, that, that's an interesting uh, point. Although the sakana they're talking about is some sort of shaka, some male oh, shade I, coming or whatever it is, you know, not oh, by... Uh, okay. But uh, it's an interesting pragmatic point, rash, a rational reason that you're giving why this might be the case. So, so, so there's a rational argument that you're providing as well, beyond the mystical argument. Uh, but, but other poskim do say if there's a chance uh, that he might come home, if there's a chance that he might come come home, then she should tovel tovel on time. So Gwaya Rav Knoll, that Sally was the Rav of Farasion, wrote, I told you a, a big Dati Lumi, safer, very popular with young couples in, in Israel called Ishvi Isha. So often they give it to, to when a young Dati Lumi couple in Israel get married or engaged. This is a, the book they use or the present that they give. So Ishvi Isha in source eight, he says, En le Isha lit A woman should not push off her, 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 her tvila. Even if her husband is not in town, she should tovel the earliest time she can do so. Why? There's always a chance that he might come home unexpectedly. Surprise, right? And it's so late at night, suddenly she's going to have to go to the mikvah or whatever it is. So, so therefore, he says, if there's a chance he might come home, then, then maybe it is she should always tovel if there's a chance, unless she knows he's really out of town. And she, you know. So, so it is in, in Israel. That's exactly the argument they always give Miluim that you never know the last minute that they're you from Miluim. Like you never know. You just never know what's gonna what's gonna be. So, so right. So that's why he says it, unless unless you've you've literally spoken uh, you know over the phone and you can verify that he's overseas. It's not you know surprise you know <laughs> surprise visit at home. So that's. Um, that, that's what Rav, Rav Vazna says. If you go over the page in the Shevet Alevi in Source 9, he says, if you know for sure. So he says in Source 9, when he's definitely not going to come because he just, they spoke and he's definitely overseas, it's a Vaposkim of Zara Kadosh, the Sakana Litvok. And this is mystical Sakana, uh, not to, not to tell. Okay. So, so they, there's again a machloket there, but that said the rational way of looking at it is if there's a chance I'll be home, then she should tell when she is man then even if he's not currently in town, if there's a chance that he should. Now, we know there are certain days where it's us to have relations. So Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av Midrabanan, and also during the Shiva, during the time of Avelut. So if her mikveh night falls out then, then she should obviously push it off until afterwards. So to Matzeh Tisha B'Av or to Matzeh Yom Kippur or obviously to after the Shiva. So if, if she was supposed to go during that time. So Rav Mord Chalayal brings us here in Source 10 in Adal Tahara. She doesn't go to mikvah the nights of Yom Kippur or Tisha B'Av. Because she cannot obviously have relations with her husband. When other you know, fast days and Yom Tovid is allowed. Uh, says either the woman, and this is interesting, if her husband is sitting Shiva, then she also shouldn't go to the mikvah until her husband finishes sitting Shiva. Asrim they can't have relations. 
and they shouldn't be, you know, hugging and kissing, intimate, but, but there's no, uh, unlike Yom Kippur, there's no sort of archakot. Lachen, therefore, Isha Avela Lotit Bol Batok Shivat Yeme Evla. So she shouldn't uh, go to the mikvah while she's sitting Shiva. Ki Asura Hibir Chitsa, the Asula Lashamish. However, as I said, it's different though when it comes to the, the husband. Aval im Baala Avel. So if her husband is an Avel, but he ain't Avela and she's not, then she can actually go to the mikvah earlier. Yechola Lit Bol Batok Shiva Yeme Evla, Ule Varech Al Tvila Zor. Why is it why is it a purpose for her to go to the mikvah when her husband's sitting shiva? Because now that she's gone to the mikvah, they can at least touch. Right. So so it makes kivin sha'inam asurim shah kravot im aina nida. Achlotit bol as belel shabbat, but but not uh, maybe not on, on Friday night. Okay. But um but uh but but there's a, there's that discrepancy. So she, if she's sitting shiva, she shouldn't even go to the mikvah because there's also an isarachitza on her. She can't wash while she's sitting shiva. But if her husband is sitting shiva, she can go to the mikvah. And that way she can at least touch her husband, even if they can't be intimate, which is a, a, an important uh, point. Um, in general, we try not to, uh, as we said, we try not to um, delay tevila. Um, and uh, and that's just a, a general uh, a general rule. They quote here a Shlomo Levi, who also talks about this, Shaira, was Rosh Kol and Kush. Um, and he, um, he, he talks about the importance that Tvila should be benachat on the one hand and not on lachat. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you shouldn't push it off for, without, without particular reason. So we won't read that inside, but that's that, that he sort of elaborates a little bit in that piece there. Okay, so we've spoken about Mitzvah Tvila Bismana. If we go over the page to 312, and we have a look at the question of Tvila at night. Why does Tvila have to be at night? So... We're going to learn a very complicated sugya, the sugya of srach bita, which is that there's a concern, even if she tovels, you know, so we have to tovel, you know, we said the five days and then the seven days and after the seventh day. So after so the eighth night, essentially, is when she would tovel. But what if she can't? What Can she go on the eighth day in the daytime? So in general, there's a there's a problem to do this. But let's first see the background inside, and that's because of the gzera of srach bita. But the source is it first starts in Psachim in source 12, Psachim Dapsadi. Kedatanya, we learn in a brighter. Kol chayve tvilot, tvilatan beyond. Anyone who's obligated to in tvila can do it already in the daytime. Nida yoledet, tvilatan belayla. Whereas a nida and a yoledet has to be at night. Titania, because we learn in the brighter. Yachol to hate of elemi bodyom, you might think that they could tovel in the daytime. Tamun lomas, the Torah tells us. Shivat yamim tihye benidata. Okay, that she should be. Uh, this is talking about a Yoledet there, uh, or sorry, a Nida there rather, that she should be Shiva Yamim in her Nida state, Te Benideta Kol Shiva, meaning only after the seven days, complete days are up, uh, uh, does she stop being Nida, but Yoledet, it Kishu Nida, and, and let Yoledet and, and Nida are associated, uh, as we know uh, from Sefer Vayikra. So, right, in the day, that just teaches you an important discrepancy. There's an important point here, which they don't, La Aniut Dati is not so clear in the book. Uh, so which I want to explain outside. A nida that has to tovel at night, that's talking about a nida in a Torah. That means she gets a period on day one, and then uh, the night after day seven is the earliest she can tovel, assuming she stopped bleeding. We, a chol sheish for zava gadol, and therefore we wait until the end of the shiva and the kin, right? So you stop bleeding, only then start seven. But a zava can tovel in the daytime. So a zava can tovel on, in, on day seven of the Shiva Nakim in the daytime, right? But uh, a Nida can't. A Nida can only so so even though we're so we are counting extra days, basically about 12 days minimum as Ashkenazim. But in theory, a Zava could tovel in the daytime. So that's an important point no, to make a discharge not when a time not not of time of period. But and therefore as an ironclad gazera, we always we always do uh, like a Zava nowadays. So this is an important point. So but Bearing this in mind, we now need to understand the Gezeira of, of, of a Nida, why it is that she has to tovel at night, even on day eight, meaning square. Let's say she missed them after the seven days. Why can't she tovel in the daytime on the eighth day? And the answer is she can't. And let's see this inside in source 13, the Gemara Nida. I'm a Rav, says Rav. Nida bismana eina tovelet ela belayla. So Rav says if it's on time after seven days, then it has to be at night. But shalom bismana, if it's not on time, if she's, if she's missed the night, she's going the next day. Then she can go according to Rav in the daytime. 
Tovelet, Bein Bayom, Bein Belayla. Once she's after the seven days, why, why not go on the eighth, ninth, tenth day in the daytime? So Rabbi Yochanan disagrees over the page. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, no. Bein Bismana, Bein Shelo Bismana, whether it's on the seventh day or not. Eina Tovelet, Abelayla. She can always only go to Mikvah at night. Mishum Srach Bita. Because of the, her daughter following her. The concern is what? That she's going, she's going to Mikvah on day eight. Her daughter learns from her, right? First, you at Halakha is here, mother and daughter, right? So um, the concern is that her daughter will see her going to Mikvah in the daytime. Her daughter mm -hmm. won't realize, mm -hmm. she won't realize that she's going to the Mikvah on day eight. And she'll say, ah, it's mutter to go in the daytime. So she'll learn and accidentally go on day seven instead of after day seven. So just because her daughter doesn't know what day of her, her count she is. And therefore, as an ironclad rule, uh, they, we never go to the Mikvah in the daytime. And the Gemara says that even Rav was Chose Bo changed his mind to agree with Rabbi Yochanan. So it says in the next paragraph, Va'af Rav Hadarbe. Rav also retracted this. As they said in the name of Rav, Nida. She can only go at night. Mishum Srach Bita. Because again, of this Gazer of Srach Bita. Um, and we don't play around with these things, as Rashi points out there that they brought in the brackets. Rashi, Shinoheget Achrel, it's Bol Bayom, because her daughter's going to copy her and, and this learn the halacha and told her in the day, Vafilu Bismana, on day seven instead of on day eight, Vaatia the day Karate. And that could be a problem of Karate. She goes to the mikvah too early. Velo Yada, the Ima Bishmini, who did Tavla Bayom. But she didn't realize it was already day eight for her mother and not day seven. And therefore, as an ironclad rule, we don't Tavla typically in, in, in the daytime. So now, so the question is, nowadays we've added dates because, because nowadays it's not the seventh day because it's Shiva Nakiyam nowadays. So the question is if there's room to be uh, Makal. Uh, in the, uh, some of the, in a, in a, this situation of extreme need, for example, um, might be traveling, husband might be traveling an extended journey on the, on the night of the, on the, on the eighth night. So, so we're going to now talk about exceptions to that rule. But as a general gazera, there was no feeling, even in your day, day, two, three days later, not to tovel in the daytime, so they don't accidentally think that they can tovel in the daytime and get the wrong day and tovel too early, which doesn't count. So the question is, well, is it ever allowed? So Rishonim have a machloket as to whether, okay, so she missed, the Nida missed the seventh, after the seventh day, the eighth night. Can she then on the eighth day total towards the end of the day and then return home after dark? Because that way her daughter won't learn from her. Because when does she walk through the front door? It's after dark already. So her daughter is not going to think or no one will mistakenly learn from her. Ah, she, you know, I toggled in the, uh, toggled in the uh, daytime. Because you don't know what time she went. Unless you walk in a minute after dark, you won't know what time she told. So it's a machok at Roshonim. Firstly, the Mordechai in source 14 brings the Rashbam, who does not allow it. She can only go to the mikvah after dark. Rabbeinu Tam didn't require this. She can tovel at the eighth day, according to Rabbeinu Tam, before it gets dark, as long as she only returns home after dark. And that way there's no mistaken learning from her, from her actions. And uh, the Rosh also brings this uh, as well. And he explains that uh, slightly differently, as we're going to see. That uh, according to the Rashbam, she can leave the house before dark. She's just not allowed to immerse until after dark. So he, he sort of makes it a bit more moderate in source 15. Says the Rosh, Rashbam Machmir. How was the Rashbam Machmir? She can, only, she can only immerse after dark, even after day eight. For Rabbeinu Tam, as Rabbeinu Tam says, no, after day seven, there's no requirement for dark. She can do she can travel close to dark after the eighth day. As long as she walks through the front door after it's already dark. And therefore, there's no concern that her daughter or others might learn from her incorrectly. Okay, and that's and how we pass in. So, so we do, we talk about this and we talk about that in the case of need, uh, that there might be uh, room to, to be made, which we're going to see in a minute. But first, let's see how the Shulchan Aruch codifies this halacha that on the seventh day, it's too early, as we said, and only after the night. And we're going to talk about the exceptions uh, in a minute. The Ramah was going to see in a minute also brings that there's an exception of a color. A color can, can maybe, there's nothing, no concern about learning from them then, because she's only going to also be alone with a, a Khatan after dark. So, so there's less of an, an issue there. So we're going to see in source 16. It says the Shulchan Aruch, 
Asura litbol b'yom shvi'i. She's too early to go on the seventh day. Va'afilu imam tenet militbol ad yom shmini or chi. Even if it's the eighth day or the ninth day. Eino yechola litbol b'yom mishum srach bita. We're page 314. If you want to join us? Talking about time for Tovalik. Okay. So, um, sorry. Hasidim, a, a few days late. That's uh, <laughs> so talking about how the, the daytime, not Tovalik in the daytime. So, the Shulchan Aruch there says um, so, even, even if um, even in the daytime, the eighth or ninth day, it's no good. Any achalal, it's bol. So you don't come to learn, the daughter doesn't come to learn from mistakenly. And the Hagav, we skip to the end of source 16, says the Ramah, Colors can top in the daytime. Why? There's no concern of getting mixed up. They're only alone with the Chatan at night. But uh, if, if, once, they, uh, once they've had Chupa once, then the, the, the same rules as other women apply. So he says that there are, there's room here, um, but it's important that the Shach here quoting the Bach in Source 17 says that um, that it's not, it's Shach and the Bach, right? They're a team here, it seems. Mm-hmm. And um, and they say that what we saw before, that they're, they're more machmir in this regard, and that she shouldn't even leave home to go to the mikveh while it's still light outside. So we saw before Rashbam and Rabbein Tam, but the Shach and the Bach take more Mahmir position, unless she's going to get ready at the mikvah. If, if, because if that way, if her daughter knows she's going to get ready there, then her daughter has no idea what time she's toveling, and she's not going to mistakenly learn from her that she can tovel in the daytime. But uh, if she's getting ready at home, she shouldn't get ready at home and then leave, once she's ready, leave while it's still day. Even if it's going to take, even if it's going to take 20 minute walk to the mikvah, or whatever it is, if there's a concern. That's what the Shach says here in Source 17. The Chatava Beit Chadash, so he quotes the Bach of Yosarkas, the Afilu Lelechet me beta le beta tvila me beod yom asr, even to go to the mikveh house while it's still light outside his asr. Behind it, Shah Isha Rochet, the Chofeta Beveta, the Lechelim from Tvila. That's talking about when she gets ready at home and then goes straight to immerse. Aval, however, Kashayesh Merachat, the beta tvila, the Makom Echad, if the bathhouse, you know, they don't ever have baths, right? So it goes to the bathhouse to get ready. If the bathhouse is there in one place, if she's going first to wash there, and she's going to return home after dark, then there's no problem because even if their bathhouse and the mikvah are close to her house, there's no concern of srach bitter that her daughter is going to mistakenly learn from her and accidentally tovel too early in the daytime. Because she knows she's not going to total down the daytime. She's going to get prepared. And she presumably only went to the mikveh after dark. Okay. This whole gazera of srach bita that her daughter is going to learn from her. And if she, that's why she can't go to the mikveh on day eight, because her daughter might not know the day and total on day seven. What what is that? So specifically the daughter. I mean, what if she doesn't have daughters? Is it a because they like is anyone? Well, there's no. I don't think it's kind of about boys because because no, 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 no. the, the, the problem is that the daughter's going to mistakenly learn the halacha, and then when she grows up, it's going to go. No, so the, sorry. Well, apparently they 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 will consent. Well, the mother was the color teacher. It seems that's exactly what we see. I said the first, you missed it. I said the first year etzip halacha is here. The idea that the mother would teach the daughter, and she's copying the mother. In terms of the halacha, the first color teacher, at least, was the mother, it seems. And the question is, well, what about a case where there's no girls at home? They don't have daughters, or they're all grown up, or they're not on ground. So is this vidyuk? So zemasha shachom, lo plum, in source 18. Vafila en la bat, not bait din. Vafila en la bat, comma, dina hachi. Even if she has no daughter, this is still the halacha, lo plum. We don't make any distinction. Upasha to that, that's obvious, meaning... This isn't just about her daughter learning per se. It's about anyone sort of mistaken in halacha once they hear about this concept. And, and you see it in halacha all the time that people see a certain thing and they, they misconstrue it and misunderstand and they learn for themselves. And therefore the low plug makes sense here to not make a distinction. That if tobling in the daytime becomes a thing, then women will see other women tobling on day eight and think I can tobel on day seven, right? Which is not good. And certainly in those times for the, Humra of Rabbi Zeira of taking on like Azava, that wouldn't have worked. 
because in those days that like, when I did seven days and then only, you know they didn't do Shemlin Kid, they did seven seven days de writer exactly and then it's too early to total on day seven for Anida. Okay. Besedagamu. Okay. So what does it really have to be mamash after dark? So the quote here again in Dark Tahara of Mord Khaliao that um in cases of need it's okay if it's after shkir, but before tzait, uh, when when it's absolutely necessary. But obviously, the ideal is to be after tzait kochavim after dark. Like it's well, you know. Curfews and lockdowns with the mikvah would be the the easiest, or 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 uh, so right because she's only going to get home after the saint. Now, if we we'll see this, just we'll see the relevant bit is the end of source nineteen, the last three lines in source nineteen. It says vav, mushat adchat case of great need, yecholah haishalit bal achar shkia. She can tell about after shkia. Why? Because it's at least suffik yom suffik laila. She's only entered the house again after dark. Meaning, consult a rabbinic authority. It depends on the uh, on the case when we would employ such a, a leniency. Uh, we'll see one such leniency is coming up in a minute, which is the question of Friday night. And, and Ashkenazim and Sfaradim will, will deviate in, in this regard. Why is Friday night different? We already spoke about preparations. Obviously, it will take place before before dark if she has to go to the middle of Friday night. But in general, we don't wash. Certainly, we don't wash in hot water on Shabbat. So what does that mean for the mikvah? Do you have to go in a cold mikvah? The mikvah can't be heated. So the minag of Ashkenazim is that we know women still go after dark and we're lenient uh, with heated water or leaves of the water was heated before Shabbat uh, for the mitzvah of mikvah. So one such person who brings us is the Shevet Halevi in source 20 of Vazna. And he talks about, you know, can you imagine we're trying to encourage our women to go to the mikvah and then you tell them they have to go after dark in a, in a, in a cold mikvah. So like, no, we don't do that. And he, he says this in source 20. But acharonim danu They spoke about that you can't wash in hot water on Shabbos. And yet the women have the minhag, presumably at their own uh, insistence, that they have to tovel in warm water. Is this really allowed? The women go to a warm mikvah or hot mikvah on Shabbos. The minag of the gadolim was always just to keep, keep shtum, right? Right? Because the amna, it, I, I simply didn't interfere. Yes. Right. Why? Because he goes on to say, the amna, because however, if they're going to usher it and say women can't tovel in warm water on Shabbos, Right over oh, the yimanu nashim rabot mitzvila. That's going to stop women going to. So it's better to be right. Sorry, they'll wait till Mosi Shabbos. But it's um, could your question... could your uh, participants there raise their voices if they feel the need to say something? No, no, no. Go for it. Do you want to say it again? Okay. No, the the reason you can't delay is you, there's a prohibition of delaying tefillah. Right. Right. So, so it's a question about why would you delay? Because on the one hand, you don't want to delay tefillah. But you also don't want her to go into a mikvah in cold water. And we maybe don't want to be makal to have her go in the daytime because the gazeer of Srach bitter. So, so let's see what he says. But, so what were they Salmichon? So he says, they didn't, the, the Godolim didn't say anything. And this was the Minhag. And he says there, V'gam samfu al mashikatav akorban etan el b'shabat, shegezeirat merchat sa'ot ha'ita rak al merchat, v'lo al mikvah utvila mikvah. Mitzvah. The gazera was only on um, washing bath houses, right? Washing, having a shower or a bath, but not yeah. mikvah and tefillah mitzvah. You know, they they've taken this. The Hasidim have taken this quite to, to an ex interesting extreme. When you have them toveling in swimming pools and things, claiming it's mikvah on Shabbos, and it's interesting. Okay, for men. But, sorry for well, men. How, how, do, how do men tovel on? How do men Hasidim who go to the mikvah on Shabbat morning? I believe they claim a it's a mitzvah. It's part of their oh. avodat Hashem. What mitzvah is it? Is it? But the question is, some of them are make. What mitzvah is it? Uh, you're you're in the wrong shul. Please uh, go down the road and ask the shayt. That's my brother-in-law. Ah, uh, yeah, fair. But uh, <laughs> that that's their way. That's their derech that they they see it as part of their as a mitzvah in the sense of avodat Hashem. What I do but have issue is is the idea of what? them going to the swimming pool. 
which is what certainly happens, a mikvah, which is at least possible mid Rabbanan, if not mid Eraita, because it's my what happens, children. What if, what if the person's a bulk carry? Then he's a re, he has got a reason to go. But that, that, so that's, that's the rationale. But, but, but then, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, Sarich Ion. Let's just leave it at that. But, uh, you know, we see that, you know, we're speaking about the Gemara there, Brachot, Daf Kaf, Daf Kaf Aleph. The rabbi spoke about it to Bin Hamar yesterday and today. That, uh, you know, that there's, there's all those sukkah which talk about Tumat Keri, but, you know, whether or not they were taken on is a uh, separate issue. But either way, this is what we're saying on. The Gezerah did not include mikvah, uh, mercing in a hot mikvah. And he also brings, the Venoda Yehuda Katab, the Gamhu Eino Moche, also the Venoda Yehuda himself, Rabbi Cheskalanel does not complain. Umutav shu shogagin. Right? It's better that they should, you know, do it. Yeah. Or it should be shogagot, I suppose, in this case. The odd mavu arba sidre tahara tam latir. Another reason to allow it is mishum the yarda chul shalo olam. Because our generation, we're weaker. What can I say? It'll be frat be matachorev, especially in the winter. A cold chol in etzel tzina. Right? So we all, everyone's sick when it comes to, you know, the bitter cold. Veruba de alma enemy cholinit bobit sonen. Shari and most people cannot tovel in, in cold water, and therefore we're, the minhag is to be um, to be makel and after dark, but they tovel in hot water, water which was heated before Shabbos at least, and uh, and that's that's the convention to be to be lenient. Sfardim have a slightly different approach. Sfardim don't like the idea of, of toveling in, in in hot water on Shabbat, so that they can say only only you know main poshrim like uh, tepe luke warm water at the most. And uh, but they have a they're lenient in a different regard. They allow their women to tovel after shkia during bein hashmashot. So that on on Shabbat lel Shabbat they're somech on rabbeinu tam the before because she's only going to come home after dark. So let's see for example Rav Avadi here in Torah Tabayit in twenty one isha shechal lel to be let tabel lel Shabbat if she has to immerse on Friday night im hamayim shel amikva chamim or poshrim that it's hot or warm lechatchila nachal she did over bein hashmashot. She should really only immerse between Shkia and, and Saint. Because then there's more reason to be make or with Kuzeirot. If she can't, then then it can be in a, in a warm mikvah, not hot, but warm. And it's not a reason to push off that tefillah. And if the only mikvah around is a Ashkenazim had he, has thought of it, so it's actually hot. Even so, Rasha itnik Baba Diyevet. He allows even Badiyevet for, for, for Sfardi women to, 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 to tovel in a hot mikvah, and they don't have to wait till Motzei Shabbat if that's the only mikvah around. But Lechat Chila, for Sfardim, they, what they do is they tovel in Bein Hashmashot, after Shkia, because the Gezeira, Suffolk Yom, Suffolk Laila, so we're more makel with Gezeirot. Okay. So we spoke about the eighth day, uh, the eighth night, no, we spoke about the Gezeira, and we start talking about a couple of um, about a couple of exceptions. Okay, so let's see here um, some of those other exceptions. We spoke about Friday night. It says here that on page 317, Tvila on the eighth day in cases of need. So are there cases where we allow, okay, seventh day we said might be out. What about the eighth day? It's, are there times where the Gazera does not apply? The answer is yes. And this is precedent for all sorts of things like lockdown and what they had to do in lockdown and what was curfews and and dangerous streets and riots and, and the like. So this is all based on the Gemara here in Nida, in source 22. At kin Rav Idi Banaresh, so Rav Idi was Matakin in the town Neresh, Lamat Bil Bayoma to Tamnaya, Tamanya, Shmone, right? Yom Hashmini, on the eighth day, Mishum, what was their problem? Not COVID police, but Aryavata, Arayot. There were lions around at night. So the women didn't want to get, you know, attacked by the lions. So they um, would tovel on the eighth day. They wouldn't go on the seventh night, but they tovel on the eighth day. So he allowed that. Rav Acha Bayako Hafunya Mishum Ganve because of Ganve. Thieves, right? <coughs> Bandits on the streets. Rav Yehuda Pumbadita Mishum Tsina due to the cold. Now the question is, well, how cold is cold? Because however cold Pumbadita in you know Iraq gets at night, Eastern Europe presumably was colder. So it's uh, arguable. So it's a question about how far you extend that heter of tzina. There's a footnote about it here. Those ones have a look. But um, it went meant the water or the or the, the, the wind or what exactly was referring to. Rava b'machoza mishum abulai because of 
gatekeepers. Basically, they're worried about basically men wandering around the streets with women walking around on their own at night. So, so there were concerns in certain cases in certain neighborhoods uh, and towns where they did allow women not to go after the seventh day, but at night, but rather to wait to the daytime, to the eighth day, and then they, they allowed it. Sorry? Johannesburg? Three, Johannesburg, but is it, yes, yeah, but it isn't, but isn't it all within the perimeter? I don't yeah. know the, and what, you know, the, Danny, there's a question for you about what, do you know what, does anyone know what goes on in Johannesburg? We're asking you. Yeah, people go to the mikvah at night. At night, but it's all, it's all within the boundary. Yeah, quite. mikvah otter in the, in the area, you know. There you go. Okay. It's, it's, you have to get there, though. It's safe to get there. No, no, interesting. People do, uh, of okay. course, we go out here. Yeah. yeah, okay. So let's see how the Shulchan Aruch Paskins these, these exceptions to the halacha in source 23. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Hecha de Ika Ones, and this is an important precedent for dealing with things like COVID lockdowns. So when there's honest, you know, beyond our control, Kogon, Shayurea lit Baba Laila, she's scared to go to Mikra at night. Machmat Sina, Jews are cold, or Pacha Ganavim, or thieves, or bandits, or Chayot Seba, and the like. Or alternatively, and this is literally what we're dealing with, what we were dealing with a few years ago, Shesogrin Sha'arei Ha'ir, Seger, right? They locked down the gates of the city. Yicholalit Bol Bishmini Mibo'od Yom. Then she can not go that night, but she can go the following day in the daytime. Aval Bishvi'i, but on the seventh day, Lotit Bol Mibo'od Yom, Afal Gavdi Ikaones. So in, it, it would... He doesn't allow to total early, but to total rather the next day in the daytime in these cases of need. The, the Ramot Chaliyahu and the Dark Zahara here in Source 24 adds that even in these cases where they have a leniency to allow her to total in the eighth day, they have to, um, the husband and wife have to act like they're still forbidden to each other until after dark in order to keep the Gazera going. And that those, so because even in the case of need, they allowed her to total the next day in the daytime. They shouldn't be intimate or touch even until uh, after dark. And therefore, she shouldn't really be with her husband, um, certainly, um, unless there's other people present. They shouldn't have yichud or touch until after dark. Shouldn't yes. Meaning room alone. Yeah. Shouldn't be alone together. Yeah. Meaning if there's, there's got to be people, children around, you know, kids around and stuff like that, because it's keeping the gazera of Srachvita going. That we don't come to rely on Tvila in the daytime. So, so he brings this in source 24. So for whatever they've re received a heter to tovel in the daytime on the eighth day, they shouldn't be together until uh, before dark. But if you can't, because you know it's going to get dark at 9:30 at night in the summer, right? We're going to share a screen by Laila, but there's going to be a curfew, so you've got to go home. Then they can be together in the home. But they shouldn't be alone together. We're at so in it ideal that the husband should be out of the house in, in theory until after dark. Same thing that we just saw previously. That if she goes to mikvah Friday night, and like the Sfaradim do, but tovelet summer pasheicha, that she had tovels benashmashes. She shouldn't come home. Until it's dark, or if the husband's gone out to shul, then she can come back while he's in shul. But they shouldn't see each other ideally until after dark. And if they have to, they certainly shouldn't be alone together until after dark. And that keeps the gazera going. Okay. There's just a couple in the house, and we have a period of lockdown like we had during the COVID time. And there's no kids. There's no kids. Is that there's no way that you're allowed to be out of your house for any period of time? You'd be sitting in your front garden, I think, for, uh, for half the day. If you have the buck of fat, see, you leave, leave the door unlocked or something, or open, on char. <laughs> that's essentially the, the gazera which they're, they're, up, they're maintaining here. Interestingly here, they bring Rav Avadja, who allows, uh, even if there's not a great need, in certain circumstances, to tovel in, in the daytime on the eighth day, meaning she doesn't want to go on the seventh day at night, she can push it off to the eighth day, but that is not the accepted practice. It's not the derech ha-melech. Um, uh, he allows it if, if, if she doesn't tell her husband until after dark, by the way, I've told surprised, right? So, so, but it's not the accepted practice. They bring her a fours or a shlama levy, they bring machon pua and others. And that, that's not, that's not our typical um, accepted son. What are you going to say? So yichud just means because we don't want them to be intimate before 
dark, so, so they shouldn't be alone. I mean, so because it's but yeah, early, so we don't want to get used to uh, going to the mikvah in the daytime because of the gazera we mentioned. So they should act as if she's nidder until after dark that yeah, day. That's not Yichud is an extra chumrah yichud because we don't want to lead to being intimate even though in theory they can be because it's the eighth day already and she's gone to the mikvah but only at night we want to get used to the fact that they only become you know it's as if she's only gone to the mikvah at night and therefore we tell them not only should they not touch but ideally they shouldn't be alone together until after dark that's that's how he, he explains anyway they bring Ravavaji here in source 25 uh, who talks about he gives a more lechat chila uh, not Lachat Chila, but in certainly in Tizanina, she wants to hide that she went to the mikvah to, to allow it. But one, we won't read that inside, just eye on the time. But uh, that's not typically the way we go. Only in certain extenuating circumstances do we now toveling in, in the daytime. Uh, other such examples was, uh, you know, if there's not going to be a mikvah readily available, COVID lockdown, they'll talk about it in a minute, see if we get to it today. What about Tzvila on the seventh day, before Shkia? So certainly at the times of when they were doing Nidda de Araita, when she was actually toveling after the seventh day, there's absolutely no way she could tovel on the seventh day because you need seven whole days uh, from, from the first day. But nowadays, where we're doing Shiva Nakiyam, meaning you wait five days and only then do you start your seven days. So, so toveling on the seventh day, is, it's, more, it's been more than seven days since the period started. So in theory, there'd be, it would be nothing wrong with toveling on the seventh day, if not for this gazera of Srach Bita. So the question is, we said there are certain circumstances where like, there's fear about lockdowns or the streets are unsafe, where we would allow toveling on the eighth day. Would we extend this in certain cases to even toveling on the seventh day on condition that she returns home or only has yichud with her husband after dark? That's what we're going to discuss now. If you were flying from the States to Australia, you live Sunday morning and you arrive on Tuesday, Afternoon. I think it would go by the person, go by her account. Mm. Interesting. You skip a day. So I think it'll probably go by the individual. It'll probably go by the. Interesting. I think it will. It's interesting. I'm not 100% sure. I would assume it would go by the individual. Meaning. Uh, right, right. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Hadaram, Rav Fight 11. There you go. Okay. That's, so, uh, I mean, it would make sense because, 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 because this is, yeah. this right. is, I mean, even though we, 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 we know we typically in the non Chabad world, we don't accept when it comes to Omer, that was Fratem Lachem is depend on the yeah. individual because the dates of Yom Tov yeah. are fixed. But Safra Lashivat Yamim is, is pretty subjective. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. so he discusses this, does he? From New York to Melbourne, the Bruce Miller is going to be here. You go according to the days of the child rather than. Because again, these are very personal halachot about one's own existence, one's own lifespan. Interesting. Okay. So Tavila on the seventh day, is there any room to allow this? So they bring here a discussion between the Shevet Halevi Ravazla that he records his discussions with the Chazan Ish. Because we saw the Rabbeinu Tam earlier does allow toveling towards the end of the day, close to Shkia, as long as she um, comes home in time of need. So do we have such requirement? Let's say she can't, the option of going to the mikvah on the eighth day is not an option. She can't go the eight, that night and she can't go the eighth day either. Let's say they've got uh, the, the case that he brings is they're going on a cruise uh, or they're going to the yam. So they're going to go away and that there's no mikvah. They're going somewhere there's going to be no mikvah for, for, so for a long time. So she's got to go on the seventh day. She can't go on the seventh night and she can't go on the eighth day. So can she go on the seventh day? Mm -hmm. So this is the discussion between the R Ravazna and the Chazan Ish, which he records here in his Shevet Halevi in source 26. Sha'alu la marana Chazan Ish itself. So they asked the Chazan Ish, Somebody has to go overseas. That the, on the seventh day of the Shivan Akim is when the boat's going to leave. And if, so she can't go to the mikvah early, then they don't want to be on this trip for, for weeks and she can't, hasn't got a kosher mikvah. And there'd be room she to got the whole ocean. 
This is true. Is the whole ocean. Uh, you're yeah. assuming love. I know. I was waiting for somebody to say this. We discussed about Veris Gazay wrote about public tovaling and, uh, and and the idea that she might not do it properly and that everyone's watching, even if she does have a gown, a loose gown on or whatever it is. Uh, which certainly when it gets the namal, the port, and, uh, you know, it's uh, certainly not ideal. And the fact that they discuss it and they didn't suggest it, I think, is important in terms of uh, that we're not expecting her to jump overboard uh, at some point on this cruise. So, they had room to allow her to tovel on the seventh day already in the daytime. Condition that they, they don't meet each other until after dark. That would be the equivalent as if she hadn't come home and seen him until the night, which we allowed. In, remember, the Rebbein time allowed if she tovels a bit earlier, as long as she only returns home oh, after yeah. dark. On the eighth day. No, but Rabbeinu Tam allowed it even Samach Lecha Sheikha. Because as isn't really the seventh day. We've done five days. Yeah, Biju. Because it's not really the seventh day for us. It's the twelfth day. Because otherwise it's going to be weeks without a mikvah. The Chazon Ish was machmir though. And he did not suggest like Peter that she jump overboard. The Chazon Ish Hichmir Bizeh. He was machmir. And says Ravaz, now I discussed with him that maybe we should allow it in this case. It's very special circumstances. He says, they have to go to, to war, not exactly what he's referring to, with the family. And if they wait, it's going to take a long time. It's terrible to go weeks without being able to, to, to be intimate or to touch each other. And therefore, he, he's cholik on the chazanish. He says at the top of the next page, it seems that even with their gazerot, they do not decree against tovling in the in the daytime if it's going to lead to weeks of, of not being able to be together. Even though, as we saw together, chazal were very strict about tovling in the daytime. And then practically speaking, so he will only allow tovling on the seventh day in a really strict, difficult scenario like this. If they're going to be several weeks without a mikvah, not several days. How much more so? They're actually going to travel overseas on the seventh day. They don't think they're, they're their destination. They're going to find a proper mikvah. So in very, uh, you know, limited circumstances, we would even allow Tavila nowadays on the seventh day. And that's because the seventh day to this day, don't, I'm just filling in, well, they, it's not really here, but because the seventh day isn't really the seventh day. It's really the twelfth day for us, which is important to, to bear in mind. Or the eleventh day, depending how you count. Okay. And therefore, there'd be room in really thick circumstances to, to allow this. Okay. And they bring Rav Avadji, who gives another leniency, that he says it doesn't have to be weeks. He says if they, she's not going to be able to go to the mikvah, obviously, that night, she won't be able to go on the eighth day or the eighth night or the ninth day. Then he allows Tovel on the seventh day on condition that she only comes home after dark. So again, he doesn't require it to be that they're going to go on a cruise for weeks, but uh, without a kosher mikvah, but rather if in the next two days, even in the daytime, she's not going to be able to have a kosher mikvah, even in three days time, she will, then she can Tovel on the seventh day, as long as she only um, comes home after dark. So he says there in source 27, even though you can't usually tell on the seventh day in the day, even if you're pushed, nonetheless, if it's a great time of need, there's no way she can tell on the seventh night. And there's no way she's going to tell the next two days or next two nights. If she wants to be lenient, and allowed to go to the mikveh on the seventh day, close to sunset, but often in such a way, that she'll only see her husband after dark, he says 15 minutes, depends where the world you are, then there is what to rely on in this case. Okay, the last few minutes, let's have a look at a, a more recent application of this. Yep, you believe it or anyone? So um, if we look at the last few minutes, practical application, they bring here, we'll see how much we get through. Tavila during COVID-19 lockdowns. So they bring different scenarios here. I won't read all of this, this blurb inside. 
some scenarios are that there's a curfew or, or that can be nothing to do with COVID, just in general to have curfews in, in cities, uh, riots outside. Another issue is the fact that there's limits, the number of people you can have in any space at one time. Uh, ten, well, they call it density. That was the density limits. And therefore, you can't have 10 women come to the mikveh all waiting in the waiting room. And you've got to also clean the mikveh in between. So what happens? What happens in these cases? Uh, uh, do we allow to, you know, make, we have to have more appointments in the daytime. So do we allow women in this case to tovel on the eighth day? Presumably not the seventh, but what about the eighth day? Um, so this is a, this is a question. So they bring here the, the chut of, of the Minchat Asher, of Asher Weiss here, who wrote about this in his, uh, he's got a, a book on, on uh, a booklet on uh, Shutim that he wrote about COVID. And he discusses this in Source 28. And he says, According to the authorities, you've got to be careful about, you know, disinfecting the mikveh, sanitizing. Between each woman. You've got a distance, socially distance between the women coming to the mass. Many mikvahs is impossible. So can we have more appointments by allowing women to tovel the next day in the daytime, on the eighth day? And therefore he allows it. He says, That based on the reality of what we're dealing with, this is a good uh, thing and correct thing to, to allow. And he discusses the whole sugya. We won't see it there all inside. You're welcome to, to have a look. Uh, and, but I do want to say that he talks about the idea that this is an onus of the rabbin. This is uh, extenuating circumstances of the community. And, and Rav Asher Weiss really was a dugma le uh, in terms of taking the, especially in the Haredi world, a, a shining light in taking the, the, you know, the, the government advice and, and medical advice very seriously. And, and the obligation is to speak out against, the, you know, the obligation to follow that advice and, and vaccinations as well. And he says he ends off there in that final paragraph. If we decide to be machmir in this, our case of COVID uh, is a case of honest rabbit. It's a public honest. You do This is something which is for everyone. Everyone knows about this pandemic. It's important to have a revach between each group. It's as if it applies to the whole city, and therefore he allowed to be like the eighth day and to open the mikveh in the daytime for women to have all the following day if they couldn't all get an appointment at night. And uh, others uh, talk about similar um, circumstances here. They quote uh, Nishmat, uh, who also deal with this case. Uh, what about if they're going to close the buses at night? Well, you know they're going to close the mikveh because there's a lockdown is starting at, from 5 p.m. to 6 o'clock. Then can you tov also? So then they they also allowed on the eighth day by Yom Hashmini to, to allow Tzvila in this case, and you can see the tshuva there um, as well. Okay, I think maybe we'll stop here, just allow time for between the this and Rabbi Kim this year. Um, afterwards, Yishakochachem. We'll continue this next week, and got two more chapters, and then we're going to skip back to volume twelve. But uh, Dr. Peter Ween, you're going to be bringing in show and tell apparently in a few weeks. Is this correct? For the final chapter. Is it just patience or is it? Sorry. <laughs> okay.